This is a sweet new GPS tracking product, kind of aimed towards your motorcycle, but you'll see that it can be used for a lot of different things, any kind of vehicle, pretty much anything you want to be able to track, mostly for theft, but other uses as well. We'll go through it all. Starting off, this is a company out of France called Invoxia, and it's kind of strange that I've reviewed a bunch of these GPS type tracker products, and they've all been from Europe, and they've all been just for the US market. Kind of weird, I haven't seen any US based companies doing this, and some of these companies aren't even producing things for Europe, it's only for us. Well, yay. So what is this? Well, at first I thought it was just basically a battery bank with a GPS tracker built in because the specs are really impressive. Several months of standby time and up to weeks of actual GPS tracking time. So I'm thinking, wow, that must be pretty beefy, but oh no, <laughs> no indeed. It is actually smaller than my SSD thumb drive. This is it right here, little tiny thing. Now the only negative thing, and I'm not kidding, this is the only negative thing I have to say about it, isn't about the device itself or the performance. It's this uh, strap they put on. It's a nice quality leather strap, but I don't have any use for it where I would wanna put it and it's not removable. So you're going to have to either snip off the metal crimped on bracket or cut the cord. They could have just looped it back under itself. In fact, hang on a sec. Well, never mind. I was gonna snip that off and see if it would disconnect, but it doesn't. It's actually tied together in a loop. Anyway, point being, not everyone is gonna need the loop and it's not removable. So if you don't need it, just snip it off, put on your own line. Seriously, that's the only negative I have to say about the product. So on the outside, this is not waterproof by the way, so can't get it wet, but that's the way most GPS trackers are. All you have is a mini USB for charging, and there's a little white light that will come on to designate that it's charging. There's no other physical button on the outside. There's a pressure sensitive dimple right here. You just kind of press it in, it makes a little beep sound. It doesn't actually move, but it's pressure sensitive, kind of like the force tap on the old iPhones, or no, I guess not that old, but you know what I mean. That's it. So you tap it for a second, and what that does is sends an active ping out to your registered app. So if you want somebody to find you, you don't know where you are, and you don't want to wait for the auto update, which can take up to 15, 20, 30 minutes, you just go, and boom. It's like reverse find my iPhone kind of thing. Now the app knows exactly where it is right at that time. And if you hold it in for five seconds, that's how you reset it because you can't take out the battery and there's no physical switch. That's it, that's the extent of the control of the device. The setup is by far the easiest. It is the best possible. It simply worked. That's the best compliment I can give it. It's four easy steps. Number one, you charge it. It's as simple as plugging in. They say from a dead charge, it takes 80 minutes. Mine was topped off in 20, so it came partially charged, and that's it. And you get a little, where'd it go? Little USB cable to USB, mini to uh, regular USB, and that's all there is in the box. Step two, you install the app on Android or iPhone. This is a phone or tablet-based control. There is no web interface, so it's completely understandable once you get into it because most of it is based around real-time push notifications. So it wouldn't really work well on at least most computers. Step three is just launching the app and it is a very simple, very fast process. It uses Bluetooth. Note, unplug it. They don't mention that, but I found that out the hard way. Unplug it once you charge it up during setup. I did the first time I did the setup while it was still plugged in and charging. And it worked, except not all the settings showed up while it was being charged. And I couldn't understand what I was missing because what the instructions on the app screen, they weren't matching what was going on. But as soon as I unplugged it and it was running on its own power, brrrp, there's all the settings right there. Very simple, very self-explanatory stuff. And that was it. Step four is use it. So it is, truly a plug and play device. It took about a minute total from the time I unplugged it and fired up the app. It automatically found it via Bluetooth. You just hold the phone near it. it. says, hey, I found your GPS. Would you like to set it up? And then it kind of asks, what are you gonna do with it? And here's what's cool. I told it it's primarily gonna be on a motorcycle. And I got an email with customized instructions for some cool stuff that you might wanna do with it on a motorcycle. 
So they've gone that extra step and given you some really easy training materials and videos right there as you're setting it up. And I didn't even need the stuff. It was all common sense. The app itself works perfectly. It's one of the very few utility type apps out there with a lot of great reviews. And I find Apple reviews especially to be pretty darn accurate. Of course, you have the outliers, the idiots out there that can't make toast. They're gonna give a one star to the best apps out there because they don't know how to tie their shoes. I discount those kinds of things, but this legitimately is a great app. You fire it up, you see your vehicle, you can customize that. You can give it a name if you want. You can tell what kind of vehicle, whatever you wanna put in there, you can do a customized picture. I just wanted the basics, you know, the get to the good stuff. So first, let me tell you what it's not. It's not a trip tracker. Those of us who go on a lot of trips and maybe we just want the data for ourselves to make a cool map when you come home or maybe you found a great road on your trip and you weren't sure where the heck it was and you wanna make sure you can find it again or you've got loved ones at home that wanna make sure you're okay and you wanna be able to show them at any given moment where you are and what you're doing, that kind of thing. That's what those things are great for. And I use a phone-based one and it goes out to the cloud and it simply updates basically a Google map. And it's real time, it's updating very frequently and you can see turn by turn and minute by minute and the speed and all that, whatever you wanna put in it. Those are great types of tracking apps. The downside to those are the power they use. They use a ton of power because they're not only running a GPS all the time, your average phone it's only gonna last a few hours from full just running one of these tracker apps because it's also sending out data continuously over its cell radio. Now, this does not do that, and that's part of why the batteries last from several weeks to several months depending on the update frequency you set. It could be as short as they say seven to nine minutes or as long as a half an hour between pings compared to every few seconds with the phone-based app. Now, I sent them an email and I said, seriously, and, and I mean this, they would sell 10 times easily as many of these units if they would give it a firmware update and just make an option in the app for a much faster pull time. Give me a 10 second pull time, give me a five second pull time. Make something that can match the phone-based apps. Yes, the battery in the unit would probably only last eight, 10 hours instead of a few weeks. That's fine. You just charge it up for an hour or two overnight like you do your camera batteries and your phone and all that kind of good stuff anyway. But boom, that would be a no-brainer device for trip tracking and then you wouldn't have to run it on your phone and not worry about, I forget all the time to turn the thing back on. I'll stop and I'll stop for lunch somewhere and pause it so it's not draining battery and all that stuff, and I'll get back on and I do this half the time and I forget to fire it up again. If I had something that was just working all the time, oh my God, they would sell like hotcakes, but it doesn't do that, at least not yet. So if that's what you're looking for, it doesn't exist yet, at least not with this type of functionality. This is designed primarily for keeping track of your bike in somebody else's hands. So obviously it's tiny, super easy to hide, especially without this yow, that was sharp. <laughs> Ow, just got a sliver in my hand here. Uh, that's what I get for trying to improve something on camera. There we go. Okay, anyway, especially without this uh, little dongle here, very easy to hide under your seat, in a bag, stickied somewhere. This would be super easy to hide. Just put some double-sided tape or Velcro and put it up inside the saddlebag on the top where you gotta like get down on the ground to even see it. I mean, the possibilities are endless for hiding basically it's a stick of gum. Think of it that way. It tracks not only where your bike is, that's the default, but it tracks any kind of motion. So if you've parked your bike somewhere, especially around people, around crowds, I've come back to my bike on a trip and found complete strangers at a state park sitting on it and tipping it up and pretending they're riding it for photo ops. Just random people like, ooh, motorcycle, I wanna get some vacation pictures on it. I, I, it blows my mind people do that, but if I had this on it, I would've got an instant push notification, motion detected. 
it detects if somebody touches your bike. That is extremely handy. If you park in an office lot and maybe the world's best drivers aren't parking there and you're worried about maybe somebody backing into it, tipping it over, whatever, instant notification, run out there, check out your bike. What the hell just happened? That is extremely handy. I'm not aware of any other device out there that does that. It has programmable, basically nanny zones. You can set a home location and then you can set custom priority locations and you can set basically a quarantine zone. And if the bike leaves any of those zones, boom, you get an instant notification. So maybe you dropped your bike off with a friend or at a repair shop or any place that, you know what, uh, I wanna make sure they're not out riding my bike kind of thing. Boom, you set up a little geofence area around that spot. And if it ever leaves that spot, you get a notification. You can see where it is, where it's been, all that kind of good stuff instantly. Very cool. Now, even though the poll time by default is kind of slow, and here's an example. I went out today, I went out to Lowe's and to the bank, and it only pinged on the way down to Lowe's. It pinged when it was sitting in the parking lot at Lowe's and then pinged on the way home several minutes later. Obviously that map doesn't tell you much. It doesn't show you the roads you were necessarily on. It doesn't tell you the path you took or anything like that. It just tells you those moments in time, how fast you were going, what time it was and where you were. And it just kind of pieces it together from there. However, you can manually request a location at any moment. So if for example, you get a notification that your bike has been stolen. You grab a friend, you get in a car, you pull up the map. All you have to do is keep hitting that manual ping button and you see a real time of where your bike is. So it's not like you have to wait any time to see where your bike is. You can actively do it anytime you wish. It's just not going to automatically track more than those pull time options. So it really is intuitive and they did think of the really good things that you need for theft. I'm not gonna say prevention because it's not gonna prevent doodly squat, no device will. Theft recovery, hopefully. <laughs> well, let's put it that way. So I just wanna check the app here to make sure I didn't forget anything. And uh, there are a couple things here. So number one, it has a proximity radar and it is exactly like it sounds. If you do the proximity radar, first of all, the, the app ping itself, it's relying on GPS, of course, but not super precisely. It's gonna get you within about 60 feet, 50 at best, right? Beyond that, it uses Bluetooth, and that gets you down to the freaking foot, man. So here's the device, here's my phone. It's pretty darn precise. I don't know if you can read that half a foot. I mean, it's inches away, 0.4 feet. Now it doesn't give you direction. It's basically hot and cold kind of thing, but this is extremely easy and fast to find it for those last 50, 60 feet. I have no problem with this whatsoever. And you can manually, just like a phone, tell it to make a noise while you're walking towards it. So finding the thing is not a problem, not a problem whatsoever. And unlike other type devices, which are crowdsourced crap, you're not relying on this hitting other people's phones and using that for its kind of location. There are a lot of those types of devices that I thought would be really cool. Uh, for example, putting on my parents who are in their 80s keychain because they've been known to lose their keys. They eventually find them like in an old purse or down in the behind a seat or something like that. But those rely on a network of cell phones running the app and that kind of thing. Now, they don't even have a cell phone, so it's not even an option for them. Not that this would be either, but the point is, this is all self-contained just for you. You bought this, you got the app, you can find your stuff without relying on anybody else. And that's really cool too. So the last thing here is manually putting it into standby mode. And that's how you get the advertised several months of battery life. And what they mean is times between recharge. So for example, if you know you're not gonna be riding, riding your bike for a week and it's here in a garage and you know basically it's very unlikely to be stolen, you can save the battery and just manually put it into standby mode. 
if you're going on a trip, of course, you can reactivate it, but any time that you need to basically save the battery and not have to worry about coming back every few weeks to charge it, you've got that manual standby mode. So it's nice to have. It's not gonna be relevant to everybody because it depends on your parking situation, but it would it's perfect for me because it's here in my garage and frankly, nobody's getting in my garage to steal my stuff because I keep my door down. But everybody's situation is different. I just like having the option. Not all the devices have that option and you either have to replace an internal battery or charge the darn things pretty frequently just because you can't turn them off. So, oh, the other thing to note is it comes with a one year subscription to the cell service and that is required for it to actually work to send you the notifications and the locations. And there is a very small subscription fee after that. They may have sales going on, I don't know, that's gonna be up to them in the future, but you do get one year of use with the purchase. So. Just note, and that is very common as well. Any kind of physical device is gonna have some kind of subscription to it because you do have to be actively using the cell service in your area to make it function. And even some of the phone-based apps out there to get the advanced features, you have to have a monthly subscription or an annual subscription in my case for the app. And that translates into using a cell service. So nothing out there like this is free and this is on par with the cost. I think it was 10 bucks a year. It, you know, none of them are expensive. So just note that one year, totally free pennies after that. What's it worth to you for the security? I'm telling you what, just having the notification that somebody knocked over your bike, that's worth it right there because that is just huge. I can't count the number of people just in my FJR 1300 group that have come out into their work parking lot and their bikes tipped over or they've come out of a restaurant and the bikes moved a little bit and holy crap, what scratched up my bike or there's a note on it, sorry. And you know, of course, no camera evidence or anything like that, but maybe they would have been able to run out and see somebody there, got some information. Maybe the situation would have been different. I don't know, but more information is better in my view. That's it. And that's what these truly are for information. What you do with it, well, that's up to you. So check it out. I'll put a link down below. These are sold very inexpensively on Amazon. We'll see you next time.